thank you, and thank you for inviting me here. Um, so, as you've already heard, uh, there are a number of clades for Ceratocystis fimbriata. We've got the North American clade, Latin American clade, Asian Australian clade, uh, and also um, uh, an African clade. Um, here you can see this is the, um, the Latin American uh, clade. And I've put uh, an A to, A to E. You can see these are isolates that have come uh, from Brazil. And they're all smattered through the, uh, spread through the, um, the clade. And the big problem for us in developing an assay is you can see the sweet potato isolate is sort of smack bang in the middle of that. So in terms of devising an assay, ideally we'd like one that excluded that, but in reality um, for a general one for that whole clade, I think that's, that's a bit of an impossibility. Still a possibility that we could develop a specific one for the sweet potato, uh, but at, at this stage that hasn't been done. Um, so what assays we have got, uh, uh, we've got one, uh, in fact a couple for all ceratocystis. Uh, this is in addition to what uh, we've heard uh, previously, a previous speaker. Um, but we've also got some assays for the North American clade. Uh, one that we believe is specific also for the Latin American clade. Um, th the assays that we would like would be for all these different kiwi fruit isolates, uh, but we haven't got um, ones for those. We've got one for A and C. Uh, we're still get looking to see if we can do something for B, uh, D and E. So in terms of this, and this, this slide is, uh, reminds me to, to say some very important points. One is that we need uh, test DNA, uh, first of all, uh, for the NAC, the LAC, um, and, and, and I guess for the Brazilian uh, samples as well. These are really to make sure that we capture everything. Because the, the things that we don't want, we don't want false negatives. So we want to make sure that we get everything. And then we've got some environmental uh, DNA from Manaki Fenua Lankia, uh, and these were soil samples because this is a soil-borne uh, fungus. So we wanted to make sure that we weren't going to, going to get false positives. So uh, while false negatives mean that we would miss stuff, false positives actually mean it gives a wrong picture that we might be thinking we have something which we actually don't, which we don't have. And that can have ramifications when you want uh, a response to an incursion. Actually, you want, an, you want good quality information. You want to know it quickly, but it also has to be good quality information. We want to know, yes, it's this, and, and we're not picking up something that is um, just in the environment that's going to interfere with our assays. Um, and so we've got uh, also got quite a number of Brazilian samples which were really useful for our uh, testing the assays that we did, and we're very grateful for those. So these are the assays. Um, we've got a couple, as I said before, for we think for all ceratocystis. One is perhaps a bit wider. Um, the the whole um, area of ceratocystis fimbriata is is going through a bit of a taxonomic review in a way, and so it, it's a little it's a little tricky to know exactly where we should put that cut off. Um, uh, so we've got one that that is perhaps a bit wider than the other, um, but then we've also got as as I said before, uh, we've got some assays for the North American, South American clades, or sorry, Latin American clades, and then uh, a couple for key, one for Kiwi A and one for Kiwi C. Okay, so um, I, just, I just need to remind myself what... Yes, so don't worry about reading um, the data that's in here. These are CT numbers. Now, um, the CT value is the... With, with real-time PCR, what happens is you have a threshold, there's fluorescence that gets incorporated into it, and the, the time, the cycle number that it takes to get to that threshold is your CT value. And the lower that number, the more starting material you have. So it's sort of inversely proportional. Now, I've color-coded the stuff here. So if it's in a blue, then that's what we would consider. Um, it's a very low, a reasonably low um, CT value. If it's in the, in the yellow, then that's above 30. And we've sort of arbitrarily uh, detected or, or described that as a, as a negative. Um, but there's also a few in there that are, are, are in the high 20s which are a little bit ambiguous. So we're not completely sure, and I've coloured those in, um, in, in brown or, or tan. So what we've got here is just a division between the North American clade and the uh, Latin American clade, and I think you can see that in general uh, our, our assays are, are looking pretty good. Okay, and in terms of um, the Brazilian isolates that we got, we 
very grateful. We got uh, 96 samples that were sent over. Now, of the of those, um, we got I say 94, and two failed. Well, that we actually know why they failed. There was actually bubbles in the in the mix, so we we can't say that they weren't detected by the the the. Latin American clay primers, the SA primers, um, but you know, they, they, it's just a reminder that, that, that experiments do fail a bit. Uh, so in this case there were bubbles in the mix, that's why they failed. Otherwise we'd say it's detecting all those Brazilian isolates with our Latin American clay primers. Uh, in terms of the Kiwi A, um, we got 67 um, clear um, positives and, and the five others that were possible. Kiwi C, we got 10 that were clear positives and three um, that were possibles. Now there were a number where there were high CQ values or CT values, um, and, and this probably reflects the fact that they are neither A nor C, but they might be some of these Bs or Ds or Es. Uh, so we sort of need to do um, a bit more work on that. Um, but also, um, you can see here that um, there are a few that are in the high um, 20s, the CT value, and we really would like to know exactly what that, that means. And so that brings us to the new technology that I um, alluded to. So in quanti uh, quantitative PCR or qPCR, what you have here is that uh, you watch it in real time. So it's also called real time. As the fluorescence, as, as you amplify off a target DNA, uh, the more fluorophores get incorporated in, so fluorescence, which is measure measured on the, the y-axis, goes up. As I say, once it hits a, a, a a value, a threshold value, then it gives you a CT value. But you can actually watch it in real time. Now the new technology we've got is called droplet digital PCR. And basically what happens here is that you take whatever you're investigating and you mix it up and, and it gets separated out and, and presumably, it should be, and it evenly dispersed through uh, a number of droplets. Uh, it's quite high tech. Um, uh, well, high, high technology that's, that's enabled you to do this. Um, so within each of these droplets, and you ma manufacture about 20,000 at least thereabouts, so, and then what you do is you amplify it using a fluorescent probe, so these things uh, do fluoresce. If there's target material within those droplets, then you take it to endpoint and it just it will fluoresce. And you count all these droplets after you've done the endpoint PCR, after it's gone to, to completion. You measure each of the droplets and you code them whether they're positive or negative. And this is where the digital aspect comes in. It's either one or zero. So, um, and so what we've got here is um, a dilution series, um, I think from one of the Brazilian isolates that we had. Um, and you can see that um, in a tenfold dilution, um, you can see that the number of positives is going down and the number of negatives are increasing. Now I just want to go through very briefly, um, this is just another experiment. So what we've got here are two, um, a series of, of two isolates that are Kiwi A, next to them two isolates that are Kiwi C, and then we've got some uh, two from the North American clade, then we've got one that's a non ceratocystis and then we've got a non-template control. And um, the assay for this is the Kiwi A. And so you can see, yes, that's great. We're getting good positives out of the Kiwi A. A uh, little, little bit of a smattering of uh, positive droplets in the other samples. And if you look um, uh, to the right, you can see the column with the red arrow. That's the equivalent CQ values that we're getting. And so now we're actually seeing, yes, that if, it's, if we're getting a CQ value of about 30, um, then that's the sort of level of, of if you like, um, detection that we're getting with those, with those reduced droplets. Otherwise, um, the really strong positives on the left-hand side for Kiwi A, we're seeing we're getting good low CQ or CT values. Now this one is really interesting because this is with the same samples but with the um, a Kiwi C assay. And what you see here is that in one of the samples that we thought is Kiwi A, and it was Kiwi A, um, we actually seen a really significant amount of Kiwi C um, detection in that. And this is corresponds to one of those um, tan uh, boxes that we saw before, which is a high, uh, or a, a, a CT value of the high 20s. Now what we think uh, is happening here is, um, I mean it could be that this is actually a mixed culture, but what we actually know with ceratocystis is that there's a lot of uh, heterogeneity, what we call heterogeneity, in the, in the sequence. 
Um, so with this target gene, which is the ITS, um, this, this particular region, it has quite a number of copies within the genome. Normally, these sort of homogenize out and they become pretty much the same. But occasionally, and we've certainly been reported quite often in, um, in ceratocystis, is actually there's this heterogeneity that's happening, which may be that there's some um, uh, either horizontal gene transfer or, or just genetic change which hasn't actually gone through that homogenization uh, process. Uh, now, and of course the importance of this, I guess, too, is if we have a, a, a biosecurity issue, um, we don't want to be mistaken to thinking that what actually is one incursion is actually more than one incursion. So it's just something we've got to bear in mind that normally we might say, oh, this is, we've got a, an incursion of A and we've got an incursion of C. This might not be the case. So we, it's just a little lesson for us to, to bear in mind that we need to do more research uh, around this. And so this is just, I think this is probably one of my line, last slides. Um, it's really just shown some of those, um, there's two assays here. One is um, the wider all ceratocystis fimbriata, and the other one uh, in green uh, to the right is what we'd call as a more narrow focus. And what we can see here is that, in fact, the, the and, and um, there's a dilution series of a known positive, and then we've got some of the land care, the Manaki Whenua land care uh, environmental samples. So these ones should be negative. And what we're seeing here is with that first assay, actually we're picking up way more positives, probably non-specific, but uh, probably more than we're really quite comfortable uh, with. And so, um, but certainly on, this, on the second um, assay, it's, it's good. Now, with this system, of course, we can actually quantify that. And so what we're saying here is that we can, we can see the sort of levels, the detection levels that we can get to um, in terms of, of what these assays are and, and um, yeah, put an actual number on that. And so just to conclude, I'd just like to summarise. I think we have some useful assays. Well, we do have some useful assays. Uh, there's a couple for CFO, but I think one of them, I think we probably consider it to be a bit too, um, bit too wide and picking up a bit too much uh, non-specific stuff to be comfortable with. However, our assays for the um, North American clade and the Latin American clade, as well as uh, two for the Kiwi A and the Kiwi C, we're really quite um, happy with. Um, Obviously, we, we should be looking further through the, the isolates that we've um, received from Brazil um, and just to see and some of, resolve some of those ambiguities. And I've also put down here that um, Ahia B, um, which is um, the disease of Ahia in um, Hawaii, um, this sort of doesn't fit into either the Latin American clade or the North American clade. So we've just got to be mindful that, that, um, these, that this assay or that this disease doesn't slip through the gap. Um, and also, also it's very pleasing to see that the primers that we've developed for qPCR actually work really well uh, with our droplet, digital droplet PCR as well. Uh, so there's quite a number of people to acknowledge. Uh, Matt Templeton at Plant and Food in Auckland University. Um, also he had a, a student, Chris, I think he might be, um, uh, who did a lot of uh, bioinformatics. Of course we've got Samuel here um, and um, Mali doing bioinformatics here, uh, Asselino, so, you know, uh, very grateful for that interaction and that, that support from Brazil. Um, but also, um, uh, and Tom uh, Harrington supplied samples from, um, from the States. Uh, also MPI, there was some great effort uh, from, from MPI and assistance and um, cooperation there. And I'd like to thank also Zespri KVH Biosecurity uh, for for helping fund this work. <laughs>